Hey class, today we are going to talk about GarageBand 10 and how to work with loops. So let's get started. First off, you're going to have to open up GarageBand. And you have uh, several options under New Project. For this, we're just going to choose Empty Project. And it gives you several options. Selecting this will create a new software instrument track allowing you to play and record a huge number of virtual instruments and sounds GarageBand has already set up. Under audio you can create a real instrument track where you can record vocals or an instrument through the built-in microphone or an attached input. And double clicking here will open an electric guitar or bass amplifier track specifically designed for recording and production of electric guitars and bass. Apple have built upon the amp plus effects selection seen in the last version of GarageBand. And here is an exciting new addition to GarageBand, the drummer. Automatically plays a dynamic drum pattern that you can tweak and mold to fit your project. We are just going to start here under Software Instrument. Click Create. Okay, once you open your new project, you have a keyboard that you may use, and it has two different types of views. You have the keyboard view that matches your actual keyboard, where you can play from your computer keyboard. Or, if you're familiar with piano keys, you can play the high notes, or the low notes. You can show that or make it disappear under window hide keyboard or window show keyboard at the top. We are talking about loops in this lesson. In the right hand corner of the GarageBand project window you'll see three icons. You have the notepad which is uh, perfect for keeping track of composition and mixing ideas on the fly. This is the Apple Loops and this opens up the media browser where you can access and place movie and audio files into your project. We need the loops browser. Now GarageBand has an awesome assortment of various loops that you can add to your tracks. And you can go through and preview them. You can search by different instruments, different moods, different beats. A lot of great stuff. If you have a certain sound you want to search for, you can click up here in the search. Or you can go through this list view under genres and, and so forth. So there's uh, different ways to find what you're looking for. Right here in GarageBand, this is what you call tracks. Now you can add new tracks, delete tracks, or rename tracks right there. Now let's decide on which loop we, we want to start with. Let's see. All right, that sounds good enough. So all you do is click it, and then you just simply drag it. And you can hit the space bar, and it plays and stops playing. Now if if you want your uh, loop to keep going, all you have to do is put your mouse right on the edge and you see the little loop and you click and drag and it just repeats over and over again. So it just continues. That's how you extend loops. If you ever want to cut a loop, you just put your, this is called your playhead right here and if you want to cut it in a specific spot, you can go edit split regions at playhead or command T and it cuts it apart. Now I just wanted to show you but I don't really want to do that so command Z to undo and let's keep adding to this. I think we can come up with something pretty neat on the fly. I'm gonna go and under drums 80's backbeat let's extend that There you go. Let's build this melody here. Let's get a grooving mood here. Let me see. Let's see. 
Okay, so I'm going to put this here. And I want to lower the volume a little bit. So you can lower the volume for that individual track by lowering the decibels there. Uh, you could also show hide automation. And you can adjust the, the volume or pan. And you can double click. So you can adjust these the way you want and add keyframes for each point by double clicking. Okay, so let's see, take a look at what we got so far. All right, that sounds good so far. Uh, let's add some guitars. Acoustic. Okay, so I'm going to add this one. Oh, uh, you have to take it off of uh, your, get out of this mode, and extend. Let's add another track. All right, so let's see what we got here. I bet we have quite a bit. Okay, now that sounds decent. Now, by default, some of you might have heard this little click, 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 clicking it if you're working with me. Let me show you. All right, that clicking is called the metronome. The metronome is on, on by default. It's a good tool for keeping in time, especially when recording instruments without a drum loop. You can turn it off and on by clicking on the metronome button on the top of the screen. Now let's look at the uh, track header here. You have the track name right here. You can click and change the name of it if you want. And then you have the mute. Click this button to toggle the track's volume on and off. On solo, you click to hear this track's audio on its own without everything else. See how it just lights up? And then you have the input monitor lets you hear signals on tracks that aren't recording. Handy for practicing that big solo. And then you have the volume slider. It doubles as a level indicator. Green is good, yellow is okay, red is bad. If you're slipping into the red, turn the volume down. And then you have the panning wheel. While holding the mouse track button, move the track's audio left to right and the stereo image. This is a great way of keeping instruments and sounds separate from each other that you can choose from. And then you have the library pane, which you can open and close, which is for when you have the keyboard, when you want to create a new track, and you want to play on the keyboard. You can choose which type of instrument you want to play. But that's another lesson to talk about later. Now, what, before we quit, I want to show you some of the sound effects. Now, you can add different sound effects that are provided in GarageBand. Uh, these are really good, especially if you have video projects and you need extra sound effects that aren't copyrighted. You're free to use these, like alligator growl or alarm clock. Or you could even search for it, like cow. So you can just drag those on as well. Uh, you can extend them to repeat. So 
So there you go. Sound effects are pretty awesome. Now one last note is you once you create your music, you want to be able to export it so you can play it as an MP3, a ringtone on your phone, or for anything else. So the way you do that in GarageBand is you click Share and then Export Song to Disk. And then you can name it however you want. Name this Test. I'll save it to the desktop. And I'm going to choose MP3. And you can adjust the sound quality if you want. And then click Export. All right, so once it's done exporting, let's go. So let's test it out. Okay, so it all exported. One thing I wanted to mention is so you can zoom in and zoom out on how close you want to get into the track and then you can just follow the playhead to see where, where it's playing at. Hit space to play, hit space to stop playing. But there you go. Those are loops in GarageBand 10. Have a lot of fun. There's a lot you can do with them. Hey class, if you like this video, please click like below and subscribe to this channel. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.